I made a comment today under this video that somebody named God told me a YouTuber will die. Important warning message. And this was uploaded by Bold Soldier for Christ and he has a link for the original video underneath his video. And the comment that I made ended up disappearing from the comment section. What I did was I actually replied to a comment that Bode Soldier for Christ made here. And what I did was I copied this and I pasted it to WordPad and blew up the words so that just in case you can't see it here I put it right here. This is the comment that Bold Soldier for Christ made. How can someone thumbs down what the Holy Spirit is trying to warn us about in this final hour? How can you be a Christian and not want to repent throughout the day? Is sin that good to be left behind or burn in hell because of unrepentance? Come on, man. And this is the comment and I've been doing this, I've been taking my comments, not all of them, but a lot of times I copy them and I put them on WordPad because so many times people erase my comments or they just end up disappearing somehow. My comment, or my reply back to him is, according to Revelation, there are some who are redeemed. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. So is it wise for people who don't sing the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb to judge everyone as guilty sinners? Moses, Deuteronomy 18.13, Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God, the Lamb, Matthew 5.48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Why reject that? I'll explain how the man's interpretation of 1 John chapter 1 in the video is simply wrong. It's written in 1 John chapter 3, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest. Yes, the children, plural, of God are manifest in those who do not commit sin. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. The man in the video needs to be born again of God to be saved. Here's some more words in chapter 3. He that committeth sin is of the devil, and whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. So, does 1 John chapter 1 speak against chapter 3 somehow? No, it does not. It's just misinterpreted by a lot of people who don't agree that whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. So let's break this down to the before being cleansed of all sin and the after part. 1 John 1 verses 6 and 7. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. Okay, now the following verse 8 is about the before being cleansed of all sin part. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. And verse 9 has to do with the after part of being cleansed of all sin. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
There is no way around it. If the words in 1 John chapter 1 do not refer to a before being cleansed of all sin and an after being cleansed of all sin, then what's written in 1 John chapter 3 about sin is a lie. Are the following words a lie? And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. And how does the man in the video abide in him if he sinneth? Pardon my old English, please. Sin is the transgression of the law, according to 1 John chapter 3. And how does an uncircumcised in heart sinner know what the real law is? What does the following verse tell you about sinners? Isaiah 1.28 And the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together. And they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed. Christ himself circumcised my heart in the spirit. And I agree with Matthew 5.48. Hebrews 6 verses 1 to 6. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this will we do if God permit for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Christ spells out the spiritual law that allows for life in Luke chapter 10. And he writes his law in some people's hearts. Now go and sin no more, just like he said, if you want what's good for you. This is a major hang-up for a lot of people is 1 John chapter 1, the, the uh, misinterpretation of, what's writ, of what is written there. Sure, there are people who transgress the real law, but there are a lot of people do not know what the law is to, tra to not transgress. You know, if sin is the transgression of the law, and we're not to, trans we're not to be sinners, really, if anybody takes all of that into consideration, then we should know what the law is, and that law it has everything to do with love. Uh, I highly suggest for people to consider that law that's written, it's, uh, Jeremiah talks about this new covenant law that's written in, in people's hearts, and uh, Luke 10, uh, the conversation that Christ has with a lawyer. Thank you.